Okay, let's discuss the overall ledger architecture. The ledger is implemented as a series of layers. Of course, you have a transaction pool, uh, very similar to uh, most blockchains. And then we have two layers of consensus. We have a DAG layer that's used to uh, produce blocks of uh, transactions, PBFT layer that provides finality on that ordering, and then that gets sent off to the EVM execution layer. And from that, we maintain a final chain and a DPoS state. The reason for this overall architecture is to build a wide funnel so that at the top here we have very fast inclusion and we can have a large participation, meaning that you have a large number of nodes that are able to produce uh, DAG blocks, which are blocks that consist of lots of transactions. And these transactions can very rapidly be put into the DAG because at the DAG level, we have a very uh, high block production rate, meaning blocks are produced in parallel. Um, and because it's a DAG, you can maintain high security against uh, forking attacks. But this does not provide instant finality, and so we have a PBFT layer that takes the DAG and agrees on chunks of blocks to finalize by agreeing to vote on the last block hash. And this provides for a very uh, large block of blocks that we send off to the EVM layer, and thus we can achieve very high throughput and instant finality. The trade-off, of course, is that these blocks uh, will have some overlap in the transactions, and that's denoted by the empty uh, hexagons there, meaning that uh, not all transactions in the blocks of blocks will be executed, but we can still maintain a very high degree of efficiency and thus achieve a wide funnel with fast inclusion and large number of participation, uh, which is very useful for avoiding censorship and for applications like data anchoring and proof of publication, or just knowing that a contract uh, call or transaction you have made will be executed if you're not worried about a double spend attack. And yet we still achieve instant finality and we can achieve very high throughput. Now let's look at the layers individually. So the transaction pool supports Ethereum style transactions and it's implemented as a priority queue. It's pretty simple. The DAG layer is the widest part of the consensus funnel and it's used to produce blocks of transactions as well as each block contains a list of uh, the tips that are observed in the DAG including uh, a key pivot tip and that's used to provide a consensus uh, ordering that's not deterministic, but achieves a pretty good consensus rapidly. Once a block is present in the DAG, it will for sure be executed, and that's a critical property, meaning that once you see a transaction present in a DAG block, you can be sure that that transaction will be included in the finalized uh, blockchain. And uh, because of these properties, the DAG forms a tentative ordering, but instant fin finalization will occur in the PBFT layer. Lastly, of course, it's important to realize that the DAG layer is asynchronous to the PBFT and EVM layers, meaning that under normal operation, you don't have to wait for either of those layers in order to produce additional DAG blocks. The PBFT layer is what provides instant finality, meaning that it's deterministically it won't be, ever be reordered. It does require two-thirds honest validator power, of course, and we assume that PBFT is loosely synchronous within some network diameter because what is being achieved consensus on is uh, just a DAG block hash basically and not a block of transactions. The block size or the, the value being voted on rather is very small and so the network diameter can be assumed to be uh, quite small. And uh, the PBFT layer therefore provides very large blocks of blocks. Having agreed upon a set of DAG blocks to execute, we can send all those blocks as a single large block of transactions to the EVM, and that's what enables the very high throughput. And lastly, again, of course, PBFT is asynchronous to the DAG or EVM, meaning that uh, in order to achieve consensus within PBFT, not everyone has to have the same DAG at any given instant nor do you have to necessarily wait for the last block you uh, committed to be executed in EVM before you can go on to produce the next PBFT block. The EVM layer is forked from the uh, Ethereum's uh, Go implementation of their EVM, but it's been heavily modified to enable processing of these very large blocks of blocks, uh, and that's what enables us to achieve very high throughput, uh, much greater than 20,000 TPS, much greater than Ethereum. And again, it's asynchronous to the DAG and PBFT layers. Having put in a block uh, in the queue for execution of the EVM, PBFT and DAG can continue, nor do uh, DAG, uh, nor does the EVM have to uh, wait for PBFT to halt or anything like that. And lastly, we produce a final chain 
and a DPoS state that we maintain, and the final chain forms the basis of the executed state, and it's an Ethereum-like chain, and therefore usable for all Ethereum-compatible RPC calls uh, to maintain overall Ethereum compatibility. And the DPoS state is coded as a native smart contract that maintains the proposer and validator eligibility, it handles all the staking and delegation calls, and lastly, it processes the fees and reward distributions. Now, the last thing to look at is, of course, there must necessarily be some coupling between uh, these layers in the other direction. So, the uh, DPoS state is used by the DAG layer to determine proposer eligibility, and uh, in the PBFT layer to determine validator eligibility, those who can propose a block uh, or a, a value within PBFT, as well as of course, vote on those values in the various steps of PBFT. And uh, to make this uh, generally asynchronous, of course, we, uh, we, we look at some DPoS state uh, with some latency to where we are exi at the given moment in the DAG and PBFT, meaning that uh, once you <coughs> um, deposit money, for example, within DPoS, you don't instantly become eligible, and once you with with uh, draw, you can't instantly withdraw your funds. And the PBFT layer is used to provide a mapping between any given DAG level and a, a DPoS state. So we look at, um, it's explained in more detail in the white paper, but we look at the latest DAG block level <coughs> within a PBFT layer and we add some value to that, and thus the DPoS state will then be eligible for all the previously unmapped blocks within that range. And so without ever having to halt, uh, we can map back to a given DPoS state within the DAG layer uh, and the PBFT layer. So that's the summary of the overall architecture, and uh, thank you for watching.